blast your way toward higher scores with the Pointmaster competition joystick from Diskwasher. Its fighter pilot's hand grip gives you control as you blow away invading mutants. The fast action thumb trigger makes blasting robots unearthly easy. And the rugged Pointmaster is almost indestructible as you maneuver through the galaxy. Extend your survival time against gorillas, ghouls, ghosts, dragons, and alien invaders with Pointmaster. Pointmaster is available now wherever you buy video games. One-handed gamers span all demographics. They include amputees, people with paralysis, people with a much preferred side, some with an arm, wrist or hand injury, some born without a pair of fully functioning hands, those who prefer or need games with simpler controls, and anyone doing two things at once, such as streamers, note takers and map makers, maybe Brian Ferry. Among these people, some will use one hand and another part of the body to play. Some will have less than four fingers and a thumb. Some will have a limited finger span or reach. Some won't be able to manage VR and Wii-like motion tracked controls. Some will only have the standard supplied controller. Some will use something more custom. Some will find play painful. And some will give up if unable to find a comfortable way to play. From the start of electronic gaming, there have been one-handed games. Spotlight Golf, from 1936, is believed to be the world's first electronic computer game. This ingenious golf simulator used real golf clubs, and as such, could be played one-handed, as with the real thing. Atari's Pong ignited the 1970s craze for interactive television tennis. One dial and automatically served balls at its most pure. Home Pong ripoffs often came with a realistic looking light gun controller, also one hand accessible for many. Golden Age arcade games with one hand controls were in the minority. They were, however, often legendary, including Super Breakout, Pac Man, <coughs> Ms. Pac Man, Frogger, <coughs> Gorf, Star Wars, and Marble Madness. Atari's Star Wars analog yoke controller gave one hand access to one of the greatest arcade games of all time. Playing with more complex controls than you can easily reach demands uncomfortable contortions and an arpeggiated panic dance between controls. Williams Electronics twin stick shooter Robotron 2084 gave an ominous glimpse of the future in more ways than one. The 1977 Atari VCS sparked a high point in one-hand game accessibility. It launched with a DE9 joystick connector that became the standard of 1980s home computing. On the VCS, if you had a one-handed joystick and could reach the console to press Game Reset, you could expect to be able to play almost any game as well with one hand as with the two. The unrestricted Atari VCS joystick standard led to a massive choice for gamers across many platforms to suit all budgets. Popular home computers of the 1980s lacking an Atari joystick port commonly made use of adapters to tap into this huge resource. Commercial control remapping devices soon surfaced, greatly improving access. Among these 80s computers lacking an Atari joystick port, most used the keyboard for a way to play. For slower paced games, one finger typing would be enough. For faster action titles, it wasn't uncommon to be offered the option of redefining your keys. This enabled keys to be clustered into a one-handed arrangement to suit. Some games would need to wait, however, for a cracked version or emulation many years later to become this accessible. In 1983, Atari recognised that some children couldn't manage their standard joysticks, nor the pressure of many of their games. Alongside the children's television workshop, Atari released the Kids Controller and a range of Sesame Street themed game cartridges. This accessible controller consisted of a large flat number pad with game overlays using large symbols to denote where to press and what that should do. The Apple Mac, Atari ST, Commodore Amiga and early Microsoft Windows popularised the mouse interface. Despite lacking a shared connection standard, point and click adventures opened new worlds for one-handed play. The 1983 Nintendo Famicom gamepad sounded the death knell for the Atari joystick standard. Using familiar game and watch controls, integral start and select buttons, and a flat design that suited some one-handed play as well, at a stretch, this gamepad changed history. For others, 
the small controls caused instant problems. Some useful options would follow, such as the Ultec 3 Majin Cum one-hand joystick adapter. In Western markets, the repackaged NES was not even compatible with sibling Famicom controllers. One-handed gaming was starting to require increasingly dexterous control, even if you could find a deliberately made one-handed controller. ASCII released many one-handed controllers, including for the original PlayStation in 1997. The ASCII grip worked with most pre-analog stick games and had two remappable rear buttons, USB. A new hope was emerging with the 1996 Universal Serial Bus Standard, designed to make connecting all sorts of peripherals to computers easier. But would these potential benefits take off and follow through to game consoles? 1997 was a difficult year for one-hand game accessibility for two reasons. Firstly, Sony released the DualShock controller, their most complex to date, with two sticks and 17 buttons. Secondly, it was a huge success, just not for one-handed players. Meanwhile, the mobile phone gaming world started to take shape, from Nokia's Snake to the use of Java and the 1999 Japanese Eye mode, with many purely thumb-controlled games becoming popular. Sony stuck with their original PlayStation console connector for the 2000 PlayStation 2. The PS2 ended up with an impressive array of third-party one-hand game controllers. Mostly, these were Japanese controllers aimed at RPG adventurers, baseball strategists and super robot war aficionados. As with the Atari, many adapters would surface to make PlayStation controllers work on other games machines. The 2000 Dragon Plus RPG ambidextrous controller was so popular that the controller was remade years later under the guidance of consoles and gadgets in Scotland, who retained the patent, as I understand. In 2005, Microsoft launched the Xbox 360 with restricted USB ports, forcing a proprietary authentication chip check. This technical barrier formed a walled garden that severely hampered controller diversity the opposite of USB access on PCs running Windows. Eventually, by hook or by crook, people found a way to circumnavigate this so that they could better enjoy Xbox games. 2006, UK game accessibility focused website, oneswitch.org.uk, starts selling one-handed controllers from £10, about $8. It also shared news of new controllers on its blog, which continues to this day. In 2006, Nintendo went against the grain of ever more buttons and sticks when they released the motion tracking Wii Remote. It was a massive success, opening new markets. This said, not all could manage the accurate gestures required, and the plug-in nunchuck added a further barrier. Of note, some games gave multiple controller options. With Madden 08, EA Sports introduced a family play mode, which gave the options for one or two-handed play. 2006, USA-based engineer Ben Heck builds an Xbox 360 one-handed controller. This would be the first of many scratch-built controllers, including clamp-on one-hand gadgets for some arcade pinball and video game machines. His one-handed controller videos have been collectively viewed millions of times. 2007, the iPhone release and popularity alongside Android changes mobile gaming forever. One Finger or One Finger and Thumb accessible games gained massive success, including Candy Crush, Fruit Ninja, Flappy Birds and Angry Birds. 2008. The Ben Heck designed E-Dimensional Access Controller is released for the PS2, PS3 and PC. This wireless controller with swappable control modules sold for around $140. In 2010, Sony rolled out an update 3.50 for the PS3 with a worrying claim that some third-party controllers may ignite or explode, resulting in injury or damage to the user, your PlayStation 3 or other property. At a broad stroke, many previously working devices became useless on the PS3. This included the access controller. A fairly dry spell followed for off-the-shelf solutions, with many people relying on an ever-dwindling supply of PlayStation 2-era controllers with adapters. During this time, many curious and ingenious do-it-yourself one-handed controller ideas were shared online. Many never made it much further. The controller project is started in 2012 
by Caleb Craft. Its mission, to 3D print and sometimes design any solution they can to help disabled gamers for free or drastically reduced cost using a worldwide volunteer network. They also run 3D print design competitions to encourage new ideas. 2014, Evil controllers start to sell one-handed focused controllers in the USA. They remain one of the most consistent outfits to support this area. In late 2015, controller remapping options start to roll out for the PS4 and Xbox One and have happily continued into the next generation. Remapping has remained rather limited, however. As of 2022, very little has improved in console system level controller remapping. Apple iOS and Android have nothing. The following would help. Full remapping, including analog controls to buttons and vice versa. Analog sensitivity adjustment. Fast profile swapping. Shift options to give buttons a secondary control. Auto fire or latching. Nintendo Switch features such as the ability to remap, capture, share and the facility to disable individual controls. PlayStation and Xbox to ensure that the options menu button can be remapped to a more comfortable position. And an Xbox-like co-pilot feature. In 2016, one switch developed a method of converting a Sony PS3 navigation controller into a far more powerful one-hand controller thanks to the Titan adapter. Various joystick modes, including driving and exploring, could be reached from the joystick via a special shift button. Alongside Celtic Magic, this morphed into the Game Control Mixer system the following year. This enabled anyone using one joystick and one or more buttons a way to reach all controls. A one-handed version and a game book of ideas for one stick and two button play followed. Finding games that are possible to play with a small number of controls remains a challenge on game consoles. 2017. Julio Vasquez created a simple 3D printed joiner to make a full one-handed controller from two Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons. This freely available 3D print design can be sourced ready-made from eBay and the controller project. Some players have complained of the comfort level with such tiny controls in one hand, but it remains an excellent option to at least try. Virtual reality came into the mainstream with the launch of PSVR on PS4 and with various PC options. A handful of PSVR games, including Gran Turismo Sport and Resident Evil 7, included a DualShock option. No hand tracking required, just standard PS4 controls. An empowering option normally missing in VR gaming. Also in 2017, the Walking VR project explored some interesting experiments in one-handed VR use via software assist modes. VR poses an ongoing struggle for physically disabled gamers. 2017, Microsoft Copilot is launched as an update to the Xbox One operating system. It mimics long-established hardware techniques of merging two controllers to appear as one. This meant that some one-handed players could hold a controller in one hand and use a second controller with a foot to reach more controls, or just play as a team. A forever useful feature, sadly lacking from other consoles. 2018 saw the release of the Xbox Adaptive Controller, the ZAC. This device allows for a wide range of joysticks and accessibility switches to be used alone or alongside a standard gamepad controller with the Xbox Copilot mode. Around this time, PDP supplied a USB one-handed joystick with two buttons, which has since been discontinued. Similar solutions have surfaced. Throughout the USB era, the far less restricted Windows PC platform saw a massive array of controllers and methods for more accessible gaming. 2020, Xbox released their new generation Xbox Series SX, keeping backward compatibility with Xbox One era controllers and features. A massive instant boost for accessibility in one stroke, with no need to go back to Square One. Two RPG games from Square Enix, Bravely Default 2 and Neo Replicant, came with a far too rare one-handed play mode. Many games offer extremely beneficial easier play modes, but seldom reduce the controls down so that play is possible with one half of the controller. 2021 and 2022, Akaki Kumeri releases some of the most advanced one-handed 3D printed snap-on adapters yet seen for the PS4, PS5 and Xbox. 
Some of these 3D prints can be downloaded from Prusa printers, bought ready-made from Etsy or requested for free or at cost from the controller project. Previous snap-on adapters have normally been for far simpler controllers. These 3D prints are today trying to deal with some of the most complex gamepads ever made. They are not perfect in my experience, with stick centering issues, the high level of dexterity needed, and on my PS4 prints, some controls being unintentionally pressed. Fettling, patience and practice is required to get the best out of these, but that these work at all is something of a miracle. OneSwitch.org.uk recommendations. Improved system level control remapping. Help customers to find suitable games. Offer in-store filters so players can filter out games that require more buttons, joysticks and or gesture tracking than they can manage. Someone remake the Dragon Plus RPG one-hand controller for the modern era, or something like it. This has an ambidextrous design and it does not require wrist arm nor shoulder movement to play. Offer a one-handed play option in games. Be aware of what's out there already. News on one-handed gaming can be found at the likes of One Switch and Special Effect, and new things to keep an eye on such as BioWave's Proteus controller and Dark Cola's Motion Control project. Loan library and assessment services such as at Special Effect, NMA Gaming and Everyone Can, these are great places to ask for more help, and there are many more. Funding help can be found from various UK charities, Able Gamers and beyond, and where you can get one-handed controllers to keep, such as from the Controller Project, One Switch, Hit Click, Evil Controllers and Warfighter Engaged. Keep thinking about what might improve things further. Better one-hand accessible control options are there to be found in the future, and perhaps one day, platform controller access can be more open again.